Neptune is more than 30 times farther from the Sun than Earth, almost at the edge of our solar system. It's so remote that you can't see it with the naked eye. Even from the highest point on the planet, only a telescope will do. That distance also explains why it's by far one of the least studied worlds we have. But what, after all, is out there that intrigues scientists so much? Get ready. Despite being one of the coldest places in the solar system, there are hypotheses that Neptune could harbor. A super hot internal ocean of water. Sounds contradictory? Over the course of this video, you'll see where that idea comes from. Why the planet is so blue. What's peculiar about its rings. And what we already know about its most famous moon, Triton. Neptune is an ice giant a class of planet made mostly of water, methane, and ammonia. It's about four times Earth's diameter, with an approximate radius of 24,600 kilometers. Unlike rocky planets, there's no solid surface to land on. The atmosphere deepens without a sharp boundary and plunges toward a mantle rich in methane and ammonia ices, down to a rocky core. Even so, many models indicate that, under certain pressure and temperature conditions, an extremely hot ocean could exist inside. How is that possible so far from the sun, where light would take nearly four hours to arrive and atmospheric layers average around minus 360 degrees Fahrenheit? The key to this apparent contradiction is internal heat. Part of it may come from the planet's own gravitational contraction over time. Another part, from tidal interactions between Neptune and one of its moons, especially Triton. There are also hypotheses involving violent events in the past, such as an impact with a large body that would have left leftover energy for eons. The fact is that Neptune emits almost three times more energy than it receives from the Sun, an outlier behavior among planets. It's no coincidence that its axis is tilted by about 28 degrees, similar to Earth's, which gives it seasons. But their each season lasts approximately 40 years because a Neptunian year equals 165 Earth years. In contrast, the day is very short. One full rotation takes roughly 16 hours. This rapid spin fuels absurdly intense winds, the strongest in the solar system, that can reach around 20,000 km per hour, turbocharging colossal storms. The atmosphere's composition helps explain its appearance. About 80% is hydrogen, 19% helium, and roughly 1% other gases, including methane. Methane sets the tone. Its molecules absorb shorter wavelength solar radiation, letting the scattering of blue light dominate the look. Interestingly, Uranus, its nearest neighbor, has a similar gas mix but is a much paler blue. Why? Researchers propose the difference lies in the aerosol layers, meaning levels of haze and particles in the atmosphere. In a deep stratum, there would be hydrogen sulfide ice. Above that, a haze layer where methane crystals form and fall like methane snow. Because Neptune's atmosphere is more turbulent than Uranus's, this snow forms and settles more efficiently, thinning that second aerosol layer. The result? With less haze to wash out the light, Neptune's blue is more vivid and saturated. There's also a third layer that essentially extends the second and adds larger particles of methane ice. When you look at images of the planet, those dark and bright patches aren't continents or seas. They're storms. And what storms? Neptune hosts gigantic vortices, distant cousins of Jupiter's Great Red Spot. The most famous was the Great Dark Spot, an Earth-sized cyclone observed by the Voyager 2 probe in 1989, spinning at about 800 kilometers per hour. But unlike Jupiter's centuries-old veteran, Neptunian vortices are fleeting. They usually last from two to six years. In 1994, the Hubble Space Telescope could no longer find the dark spot. In its place, it saw a new, smaller spot in the northern hemisphere. Decades later, in 2018, Hubble recorded another dark vortex that behaved oddly. It began drifting south, as if it would disappear at the latitudes where these phenomena tend to fade but unexpectedly made a U-turn and returned north. To top it off, a smaller structure seemed to detach from it, possibly a subvortex in the process of fragmenting, something scientists hadn't seen there before. On many occasions, these eyes of the storm show up accompanied by fast white clouds nicknamed scooters, which move even faster than the vortex itself. The idea is that they form above the whirlwinds, 
where gases rise and freeze into crystals. Curiously, the absence of these clouds in certain events has also helped refine theories about how such systems are born and evolve on ice giants. Like the other giants, Neptune sports a ring system. For a long time, they were hard to see, tenuous, thin, and partly dusty. In 2022, a near-infrared image from the James Webb Space Telescope revealed these rings in sharp detail, along with several moons. The last time we had such a complete portrait was more than 30 years earlier with Voyager 2. You can identify about five main rings named after astronomers who contributed to studies of the planet. The innermost and most loose, rich in dust, lies about 42,000 kilometers away, with a radial width nearing 2,000 kilometers and containing between 40% and 70% dust grains. The second ring is much brighter and narrower, just over 100 kilometers wide. The third is the widest, about 4,000 kilometers across, but contains less dust, roughly 20% to 40%. The fourth, at the edges of this belt, is so subtle and so dust-poor it almost vanishes in images. The fifth ring, the outermost and narrowest, has an orbital radius around 63,929 kilometers and is only 35 kilometers wide, and it's precisely this outer ring that stands out for an exotic detail, the arcs. Think of the arcs as luminous stretches clumps of dust that don't form a continuous circle but bright segments distributed along the ring. Each arc was given a name that evokes human ideals, liberty, fraternity, courage, and equality. The most intriguing thing is that they aren't static. Over time, some, especially fraternity and equality, seem to trade material and vary in size. What keeps these chunks cohesive, instead of spreading evenly around the ring, remains a puzzle. One hypothesis is that these arcs were born from the fragmentation of a parent body within the Roche limit, the distance beyond which a planet's gravity pulls apart fragile structures, possibly with gravitational help from small shepherd moons that confine and reshape the particles. Webb's images also caught seven of the 14 known moons, including several inner regular ones that zip along nearly circular orbits. Two of them, such as Despina and Galatea, act as ring shepherds, helping keep the dust organized. But the scene stealer is Triton, Neptune's largest moon and one of the most intriguing objects in the entire solar system. In the photos, Triton shines brighter than the planet itself, and for good reason. Its surface is almost entirely covered by nitrogen ice, which reflects about 70% of the sunlight that hits it. At about 2,700 kilometers in diameter, Triton is larger than Pluto and, by itself, concentrates roughly 99.7% of the total mass of Neptune's moons combined. It also appears to be the coldest geologically active object we know, with surface temperatures around negative 391 degrees Fahrenheit. Like many moons, Triton is in synchronous rotation. It always shows the same face to Neptune. What makes it exceptional is its retrograde, inclined orbit it moves opposite to the planet's spin. That means that over its cycle, the poles and the equator take turns facing the Sun. How do you explain such an odd orbit? The leading hypothesis is that Triton wasn't born next to Neptune. It likely formed in the Kuiper Belt, the trans-Neptunian region rich in small icy worlds and at some point was captured by the giant's gravity. Some models even suggest Triton may have been part of a binary system. As it passed near Neptune, tidal interactions slowed and snared the satellite while its companion was ejected. That event may have been so dramatic that it scrambled the rest of the system. Neptune has relatively few moons compared, for example, to Jupiter, and it's possible that some were destroyed or ejected during Triton's capture. Voyager 2's 1989 photos revealed a surface that looks like a mosaic, marked by smooth terrains, few craters, and features reminiscent of plumes and frozen flows. Crater counts indicate certain regions may be between 10 and 100 million years old, very young, geologically speaking, pointing to recent activity, likely cryovolcanism. It wouldn't be a stretch to imagine a subsurface ocean sealed beneath layers of ice. The presence of ammonia mixed with water would act like antifreeze, delaying complete solidification and allowing internal mobility for longer. The observed plumes may have two non-exclusive origins. 
cryovolcanoes venting subsurface material, or jets generated when the sun warms the surface, compressing and releasing nitrogen trapped under the ice. Either way, confirming the existence of an ocean on Triton is still a huge technical challenge. The same solar energy, weak but steady, should also sustain the tenuous nitrogen atmosphere that envelopes it. And what about life? The natural comparison is Enceladus, Saturn's moon that also shows signs of an internal ocean. But without direct data, any claim would be overreach. For now, it's far too early to call. Speaking of the Kuiper Belt, that's where Neptune's story likely intertwines with thousands of small worlds. This region begins at roughly 30 astronomical units from the Sun and stretches for something like 20 AU. It's a repository of icy objects, from asteroids to dwarf planets like Pluto. Neptune's gravity acts as a large-scale conductor, locking many of these bodies into stable orbital resonances. That means they complete a fixed number of orbits relative to Neptune, staying locked in a rhythm that avoids dangerous encounters. This organization suggests a past more dynamic than it looks. Many scientists argue Neptune formed closer to the Sun and migrated outward, sweeping up and trapping objects along the way. This migration would have helped keep a portion of the Kuiper Belt at home. Without the resonances, many of these bodies could have been flung very far away, or even toward the inner regions with potential impacts. If you're thinking there are still huge gaps in this story, you're right. The exact composition of Neptune's interior is still up for debate. The detailed structure of its layers, the precise dynamics that build and dissipate the dark vortices, the mechanism that holds the ring arcs together, the role of the shepherd moons, and the list of processes that govern weather on a world of hydrogen, helium, and methane, all of this is still under construction. Even relatively recent phenomena in data series, such as the cooling observed between 2003 and 2018 and a localized warming near the South Pole between 2018 and 2020, likely tied to seasonal changes in atmospheric chemistry, show that Neptune is more changeable than we imagined. And circling back to that hypothetical internal ocean, some skeptical estimates put the odds of that water actually existing today at around 15%. Only billions of years from now, as the planet cools and internal conditions shift, might the chance rise to nearly 40%. In any case, Neptune's heat engine is undeniable. It keeps releasing energy into space in quantities far greater than it receives, which by itself demands a robust explanation involving formation history, impacts, and thermal evolution. Amid all this, it's worth remembering. Neptune also has seasons. And when we say a season lasts about 40 years, we can imagine how seasonal shifts in chemistry and atmospheric dynamics have time to propagate and reorganize clouds, hazes, and winds on a planetary scale. It's against this backdrop that great dark spots arise, methane scooters zip by, bright white bands form, and the deep blue that almost hypnotizes in high contrast images takes shape. It's also this context that molds the faint rings, with their bright segments that defy expectations, and the inner moons that sweep, feed, and confine dust like attentive shepherds. And Triton? It remains a reminder that planetary systems are stories of encounters and near misses. A world likely captured late, cold enough to hurt, yet geologically alive, that might hide an ocean beneath the ice. If one day we probe its plumes up close, we may read signs of complex chemistry, perhaps even ingredients that, in other environments, favor life. It's tempting to compare it to Enceladus and Europa, but the script here is different. Retrograde orbit, capture history, nitrogen atmosphere, and a surface that has already displayed active jets. In the end, Neptune remains a great natural laboratory for questions that matter. How do ice giants form and evolve? How do atmospheres dominated by hydrogen and helium, seasoned with methane and layered aerosols that make blue crystals, snow, actually work? What mechanisms create short-lived continent-scale storms and extreme winds? What stabilizes arcs in such narrow rings? And how does a planet 30 astronomical units away manage to glow with its own heat as if it carried a furnace within? While we await future missions, 
perhaps a dedicated orbiter with repeated Triton flybys and close passes through the rings, every web image, every Hubble time series, and every old Voyager data point gains new value. One day, when we can dive again into Neptune's deep blue, we may find answers to questions that, for now, only leave us wanting to ask even more. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our journey through the other planets of our solar system. Share this with a friend who loves the cosmos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.